Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and the laity, let us pray to the Lord. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. For this for this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. And bring our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Lord, our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion. Grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Τον <Τι> Ευλογείτε τον Κύριον πάντα τα έργα αυτού εμπάντη τόπο της δεσποτείας αυτούν. Peace, let us again pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, save your people and bless your inheritance, protect the whole body of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, and glorify them in return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. For you are good, yours is the dominion, the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> Ανέσω κυρίων εν τη ζωή μου, ψαλώ το Θεό μου, 
Peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Master and Lord our God, you've established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister you to your glory. Grant that the holy angels may enter together with us, that we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Blessed is the entrance of your holy ones always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. was told 
to the women disciples of the Lord by the angel, having thrown off the ancestral curse and boasting, they told the apostles, Death has been vanquished, Christ our God is risen, granting to the world great mercy. Together with our choir, the hymn of Pentecost and of our church, it is on page two of your bulletin. Protection of Christians unshameable, intercessor to our holy maker unwavering. Reject not the prayerful cries of those who are in sin. Instead, come to us, for you are good. Your loving help bring unto us who are crying in faith to you. Hasten to intercede and speed now to supplicate as a protection for all time. Theotokos, for those who honor you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, As you may remember from our messages on the Divine Liturgy, one of the roles that we play is joining the angels in singing the hymns and the praises to God along with our choir and our chanters. So, please join along as we continue with the liturgy with the thrice holy hymn, the Trisayon, Aios of Theos. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, you dwell among your saints. You are praised by the seraphim with the thrice holy hymn. And glorified by the cherubim worship by all the heavenly powers, you brought all things out of nothing. And to being, you have created man and woman in your image and likeness, to adorn with all the gifts of your grace. You give wisdom and understanding to the supplicant, do not overlook the sinner, but it was time to establish repentance as a way of salvation. You have enabled us, your lowly and unworthy servants, to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar to offer you worship and praise. Master, accept the thrice of him also from the lips of us sinners and visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and voluntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies, and grant them worship and serve you in holiness all the days of our lives. By the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. I use the Theos, I use the Spiros, I use the Nathosile, so we must. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Holy and immortal, have mercy on us.
Dynamis. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you in the throne of the glory of your kingdom. Seated upon the cherubim. Always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Amen. How magnificent are your works. You have made all things in wisdom. Let us attend. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Let us attend. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes to God, that comes from God, and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law that everyone who has faith may be justified. Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness which is based on the law shall live by it. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word, faith, the word of faith which we preach. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For man believes with his heart and so is justified, and he confesses with his lips and so is saved. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Let us attend. At that time when Jesus came to the other side of the country of the Gergesenes, Two demoniacs met him coming out of the tombs, so fierce that no one would pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of swine was feeding at them distance from them, and the demons begged him, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the swine, and behold, the whole herd rushed down to the steep bank, into the sea and perished in the waters. The herdsmen fled and going into the city, they told everything and what had happened to the demoniacs. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. And getting into a boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. Let us stand aright, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. With these words, we move into the most sacred part of the divine liturgy, the anaphora, which is the topic of our sixth installment of our summer teaching series on the divine liturgy. But wait, last week we addressed the topic of the great entrance, which is going to take place in just a moment here. How could we be at the anaphora already? What happened to the rest of the liturgy? What happened to the, liturgy of, to the litany of completion? To the kiss of peace, you all know very well, and of course, the creed. We just arced right over all of those. Well, the answer to that is very easy. It's only an eight-week series. The liturgy is a really big topic, 
And so we're simply not able to explain and examine every part of this beautiful service. So Father Aradu and I have chosen to offer you detailed looks at specific parts and emphases of the Holy Liturgy, even though we can't cover all of it. So, today is the anaphora. I know this is not a word that you use every day in your conversations. Do me a favor, repeat this so you remember it. Anaphora. Anaphora. Okay, I'm going to explain that. Well, the natural question is, what is the anaphora? Well, it refers to this central portion of the service from the phrase, let us stand well or let us stand right. There's a petition that we'll be offering after the great entrance. All the way through the consecration of the holy gifts. In other words, it's the most sacred part and holy part of the most sacred and holy service in the entire Orthodox liturgical life. It goes from the end of the creed to the offering of the holy gifts. So let's look at the word itself. What does anaphora mean? By the way, it's spelled in English A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A, -A -A, anaphora. Linguistically, of course, it's a Greek word. It means an offering. In this liturgical context, however, we can really expand that to mean three things according to a contemporary Orthodox scholar, Father Lawrence Farley. First, the anaphora is a dialogue. First of all, between the priest, the celebrant, and the congregation, between me and between you. Then, from the priest and the congregation, us together, to God. And you can see this demonstrated in exchanges like this. You know these and you'll hear them coming up. The priest says, let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. And the choir responds, and you hopefully with them, a mercy of peace and a sacrifice of praise. Really a little expanded, it is a mercy offering of peace and a sacrifice of praise. Also in another part, a little later, the priest comes around, turns around and says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all. And you all graciously respond and with your spirit. You see how the dialogue is going on here? Sometimes when you think you're just there watching, we're just really not aware of what our full calling and responsibilities and privileges are during the Divine Liturgy. So ultimately, if you reflect over these simple dialogues, it's really the priest asking the congregation to offer consent to proceed forward to the Holy Offering together as the people of God. A priest can never, ever, ever do a liturgy by himself. Well, granted, sometimes the congregation is a little smaller than this on weekday liturgies and so forth, but I cannot, if I show up, and George is not there chanting, if the choir is not there, if you are not there, I cannot do a liturgy by myself. There is no dialogue, there is no consent. All right, second of all, it's a remembrance. Anaphora is a remembrance. Jesus said in Luke 22, 19, do this in remembrance of me. And so the anaphora is the part of the liturgy that places us in faithful obedience to that commandment. And when you say remember, usually remember goes right here. It's something I've got to keep in my mind so I don't let it go, right? But this remembrance is not a mental activity. It's actually an action on our part in response to the remembrance of God's plan of our salvation here and now. And third, the anaphora is an invocation. That Greek word for invocation is epiklesis, which means to actually call down. The one being called down, as you might say, is none other than the Holy Spirit, the comforter that Jesus Christ promised would be sent by the Father after his ascension back into heaven, portrayed in this icon right above. And there is a critical part of the calling that involves you, and it affects you, and it changes you, or at least it should during the Divine Liturgy, and I'll get to that in a moment. So to recap, the anaphora is the section of the liturgy 
It's an interactive dialogue between the priest and the people, between us and God. It's the action that fulfills the commandment of God, do this in remembrance of me. And it's the calling down of the Holy Spirit that makes the impossible possible. Consecrating our earthly offerings of bread and wine into the holy and sacred and life-giving body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, again, I realize this is a very large topic. Honestly, in seminary and our liturgical classes, this was a huge part of our studying at the heart of the liturgy. And we really have only a few minutes to explore it today. So I'd like to highlight a few significant things that actually occurred during this holy and sacred part of the liturgy and address what they mean to you. Four things. First, the lifting of our hearts. Then, the offering of thanks. Then, the love of God made known. And finally, the sending, the calling down and the sending of the Holy Spirit. So, you know these phrases. I'm picking things out of the liturgy to address each of these topics. Let us lift up our hearts, the priest says. At the first part of the anaphora, the, people, the priest invites the people, let us lift up our hearts. The people respond. What? Come on, you know this. We lift them. Come on. We lift them up to the Lord. You see how it's already in you? And you just need to explore a little bit more about what it actually means. The people respond, we lift them up to the Lord, not as an emotional or sentimental response. It's really a statement that you make of how we should live our lives as Christians. When the priest says, where is your heart? And you say, I'm lifting it up to God. But in the deeper meaning, it's not just our heart as we often think about it. It's really speaking of that broader context of the understanding of the heart in the early Christian in the ancient world. It's really speaking of our entire life. Our thoughts, our words, our actions, our attitudes, our desires, and our will. That's heavy lifting when the priest says, lift up your hearts to God. And you're saying, not just my heart, but everything. So the lifting of our hearts is the pointing of our entire life to Christ and to his holy dwelling place in heaven. Think about it this way. When you ask someone for directions <coughs> and they point, it's that way, you turn your journey and you head that way. By the lifting of our hearts, we direct our journey of life to the kingdom of God. Next, for all these things we thank you. It's offered in one of the prayers. The Greek word off, often used for Holy Communion is thea kinonia. It literally means Holy Communion. But in the broader and more comprehensive form of which embraces really the whole liturgy, the words that we use are the Holy Eucharist or Thea Eucharistia. Now, when you say Eucharist, oftentimes that means a communion service. And if the word Eucharistia sounds familiar to you, those of you who know any Greek at all, it's because it's, the for, it's a form of the Greek word that we use all the time. Eucharisto, thank you, or Eucharistia, thanks. So why would Holy Communion be so closely tied to the idea of thanks? Listen to the first part of the first prayer of the Anaphora, and it reminds us why we are here today. It starts like this. It is proper and right to hymn you, to bless you, to praise you, to give thanks to you, and to worship you in every place of your dominion. That is the priest on behalf of all of us, addressing directly to the Lord. But after recalling in that prayer the saving work of Jesus for which we are giving thanks, it then gives us even more reasons in our own life, even things, listen, that we're not aware of. For all these things, it continues, we thank you. That is all the things that Jesus did for us. And we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. For all things we know, and we do not know. We're for the blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. 
We are thanking God for things we don't even know He has done for us. How about that? Is that an entire life of thanksgiving or what? We have so much to be thankful for, and the liturgy reminds us each time. Next, you so loved your world. In uh, major sporting events all over the country for years now, you may have seen people standing there with the famous sign, John, what? 316, that's right. What is it? It's really a form of Christian shorthand for a scripture verse that is not just a sermon. It's actually the entire message of salvation in Jesus Christ. The actual verse reads thus, for God so, say long if you know it along the way, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. If the liturgy was one of those sporting events, there would be John 316 signs everywhere. You would be in the back rows, yeah. The angels would be dropping them down from heaven, yeah. The people would be holding them, and that's because of this prayer offered by the priest to God. See if these words now sound familiar a little bit more. Facing the altar, lifting up towards heaven. Holy are you, O God, and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you and most holy. You'll be hearing these words shortly, by the way. And sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here go the signs. Yeah, John 3.16, right? Having recalled and revealed the purpose of God's plan, we immediately then move on to the invocation of the Holy Spirit. And it happens with these words. Send down your Holy Spirit. Now stop right there. In case you've made it this far through the anaphora, thinking that the only purpose that we've all gathered here for is the bringing of the Holy Spirit to make that bread and wine the body and blood of Christ, this prayer makes us realize it's not just that. And that makes us realize I'm not just watching something that's happening up there at the altar. Something is happening to me. Remember I told you at the beginning you'd find out how this all affects you? Here's the quote from that prayer. Once again we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. And we beseech and pray and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the gifts here presented. Do you notice what came first? Us. As Father Emmanuel Chadzidakis in his book on the Divine Liturgy explains, the final goal of the epiclesis, the invocation, the calling down, and of the, and of the anaphora and the Eucharist as a whole, is not merely to change the bread and the body of Christ, the wine, the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Christ, but to change us into his body. Through the eating of the sacramental body of Christ, we are incorporated afresh, he says, into his mystical body. So, when we bow our heads on a Sunday, or when we kneel during the weekday liturgies, at the moment of the consecration, we're not watching a consecration. We are being consecrated. Because the Holy Spirit isn't laser focused just there. It is cast throughout the entire church and upon you. How, how can we approach the liturgy then as a spectator or an observer when we realize that we have become the object of God's love and the recipient of it, God's actions, God's plan. Nobody leaves the liturgy untouched by the Holy Spirit and by God's good grace. Whether we realize it, whether we receive it, and whether we respond to it is another question. There's just so much more, my brothers and sisters, but we really are out of time. More importantly, the rest of the liturgy is waiting for us. And I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to get there. 
I hope these teachings about the liturgy so far have increased your knowledge and your understanding of this sacred service. But even more, I hope they have grown your awareness that this service is not something that we do here at Holy Trinity Church each Sunday or feast day, but rather it is our participation in, contribution to, receiving of God's universal and cosmic plan of salvation for all mankind. And it's the place where heaven and earth meet. That's what the Holy Anaphora is all about. So I conclude today with a beautiful quote from a beloved brother of blessed memory, Father Thomas Hopko, in his book, The Orthodox Faith. And it speaks to us about what, not what the Holy Anaphora is, but where it takes us. Heaven and earth, he says, are now blended into one, filled with the glory of God. The ages past and the ages still to come are brought into unity. All boundaries of time and space are utterly broken. All walls of division are totally destroyed. Man's sins are forgiven in Christ. His impurities are cleansed. His corruption is healed. His mortal nature is restored to immortality with God, his created humanity, and is filled with the uncreated divinity of the all-holy trinity. So, follow me there as we stand to right, stand in awe, and attentively present the holy offering in peace. Amen. Wisdom and grant that, always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Again, we bow before you and pray to you, good and loving God, hear our supplications and cleanse our souls and bodies from every problem of flesh and spirit, and grant that we stand before your holy little table without a blame or condemnation. Grant also God progress in life, faith, and spiritual sermon to the faithful who pray with us, so that may we worship you with reverence and love and partake of your holy mysteries without blame or condemnation, and become worthy of your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. No one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near, and minister to you the King of glory, to serve you as great and awesome even for the heavenly powers, but because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and Lord of all, and entrusted to us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. You alone, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, Lord of the seraphim, the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You are good and ready to hear therefore, for I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the best of the grace of priests, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. Do I come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, and reject me from among your children, but make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy offer you these gifts through Christ, our God of the offer and the offered. The one who receives and is distributed into you, we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life, creating spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Ita quiero vi mysticos y conisondes. Que tis opio triadi tu trisayu nimen prosadon des pas in tin biotic in apothomet mem in man. Osten vastile anton olo in podexamen in tes angelicest oratos triformen in taxes in alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We mystically represent the cherubim, sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all, invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come, let us worship God, our King, and bow down before him. Come, let us worship Christ himself, our King and our God, and bow down before him. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful. Let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, to the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, block of my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is ever before you. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, that you may be found justified when you speak and blameless when you are judged. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin, and I Thank you, the sons of going with us. Turn your face to my sins. My sins are blotted on my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. and me to govern spirit. O Lord, you shall open my lips. And my mouth shall announce your praise. Your and sacrifice shall give it to me. The light and burn offering sacrifice to God as a broken spirit. Broken and contrite heart, O God, you are not despised. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. The walls of Jerusalem be built in your spirit. Please, burn offering. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. Dios last meet me the log of his son, may God be merciful to me, son, and save me. Roskin up at that young guy in Pnebmacan. God be merciful to me, son. May the Lord our God remember those who love us and those who hate us. In peace, lift up your hands to the holy places and bless the Lord always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The Lord ascends with the cry of command and with the shout of the trumpet of God. Precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us. O God, by your grace, 
for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. For an angel of peace, the faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord that we may complete the remain of our that the completion of our lives for the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice and praise and those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and the transgressions of the people. And make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us, with the gift you presented and with all your people. Through the mercy of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Peace be with all. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. I love you, Lord, my strength, Lord, is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Guard the doors in wisdom, let us attend. I believe, believe in, in one God, God Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. As you were attentively listening to the message today, you realize that that petition now brings us into the Holy Anaphora, where we will remain until the distribution of, commu of Holy Communion. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, to praise you, to thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. 
You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing. And when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things, we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. For all things we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-wing, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying, Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy, and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled a divine plan for us when the night he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sin. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second and glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. The sanctum son si prosferomen, catapanda, kithiapanda. Please bow your heads during the epiclesis the invocation until the beginning of the next hymn. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. And we ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. That which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. So that they may be those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you the spiritual worship of those who are opposed in the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, Martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous spirit made perfect in faith.
Ξερέτο τη Παναγία Ακράντου, υπερευλογημένη εν δόξου δε σπίνη Σιμών Θεοτόκου και Άι Παρθένου Μαρία. For Saint John the Prophet, Baptist and Four and the Holy Glorious Most Honored Apostles, for Saint Parthenius, Bishop of Arthur, John and Simeon, the Fools for Christ, whose memory we celebrate this day and all the saints whose supplications bless us. Remember those who have fallen asleep with hope of, res of the resurrection of the church of life. John the Priest. Petros, Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. Remember, Lord, the travelers, the sick, the suffering, the captives, granting them protection and salvation. Remember, Lord, those who do charitable works, who serve in your holy churches, and who care for the poor and send your mercy upon us all. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. <clears throat> and may the mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts here offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. That our loving God who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance may in return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope. We ask, pray, and entreat, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries. From this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, the confidence before you and not in judgment, or condemnation, and make us worthy, Master, with confidence, without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater imon, o endi suranis, aias tito tonomasu, el teto i vasiliasu, genithito to telimasu, o senuranoke epitisis, tonarton imon ton epiusion, dosim in simeron, ke afasimin to fulimata imon, os ke mi safim in sifletis imon, ke mi isnenkis imas ispirasmon, alarisa imas apotoponiru. Ti suest in Ivasilia, che dinamis che doxa, tu patros che tu iucta, iup nev matos nin che ai, chi su se onas to neonon. Irini passi, tas che falassi monto chirio, clino men. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you've created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. 
Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us, and let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. The Lamb of God is broken and distributed. Broken but not divided, he is for every and every person who is sanctified by those who partake of him. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is the perfect of your saints, always and ever, into the ages of ages, and then the one who faith. I believe, I believe and confess, confess Lord, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation, to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God, and to place in Him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, O Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas. But as a thief, I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive me, John, the unworthy priest. God be merciful. To me, John, the unworthy priest, is given the most precious and holy body. Of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And to me, John, the unworthy priest, is given the most precious holy blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Behold, this has touched my lips. Take away my sins and cleansing my transgressions. Glory to O God, glory to O God, glory to O God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know not only you, we call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful. Let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. Over the cross, joy has come to all the world. Have a blessing, Lord. Let us praise his resurrection. As the holy gifts are brought forward, please allow me to remind you that according to the canons of the Orthodox Church, the gifts are to be received by those who are Orthodox Christians who have prepared according to Orthodox practice to receive the holy body and blood of Christ through their prayers, their fasting, their seeking of forgiveness. All those who are with us otherwise have joined us today. We invite you to remain until the end of the service to receive the blessed bread and to join us for the communion of fellowship in our coffee hour afterwards where we get a chance to greet you and receive you uh, with warm and open arms as visitors, guests, or other members of the Holy Trinity family. May God have mercy on us. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
Oh God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Wash away, our Lord, by your holy blood, the sins of those commemorated through the obsessions of the holy Theotokos, never Virgin Mary, and of all the saints. Be exalted, God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. <clears throat> Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, giving us the mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. <clears throat> Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Good morning. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commend ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Memorial. Memorial service. We, th <clears throat> we thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe. Through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification and to you we give glory. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever into the ages of ages. Let us... Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Christ our God, you the fulfilled in the law and the prophets, you fulfilled the dispensation of the Father. Come and fill our hearts with joy and gladness, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Join us as we offer memorial prayers 40 days for the servant of God, Nicholas Gellis. Κοινοδόν διά της μετανοίας, το απολολός προβατών εγώ ημι, ανακάλεσε με σωτήρ και σώσον με. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Of old you created me from nothing and honored me with your divine image. When I disobeyed your commandment, O Lord, you cast me down to the earth from where I was taken. Lead me back again to your likeness, 
and renew my original beauty. Bless it are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes, give rest, O God, to your servant, place him in paradise where the choirs of the saints and the righteous will shine as the stars of heaven. To your departed servant, give eternal rest, O Lord, and forgive all his offenses. Now and forever and unto the ages of ages, amen. Rejoice, gracious lady, who for the salvation of all gave birth to God in the flesh, and through whom the human race has found salvation, to you, pure and blessed Theotokos, may we find paradise. Alleluia, 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 doxa sio Theotokos. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 doxa sio among the saints, O Christ, give rest to the soul of your servant where there is no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, but everlasting life. Within your peace, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also. To the soul of your servant, for you alone are immortal. Oxa patrice iote ai opnevmati, si o theo simon, o catavasi sadi, ceta sodinas lisas, tombe pedimenon, aftos cetim psichin tu dulusu. Now and forever and unto the ages of ages, Amen, most pure and spotless virgin, who ineffably gave birth to God, intercede with him for the salvation of the soul of your servant. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great love, we pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Nicholas, who has fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of his sins. Voluntary and involuntary. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May the Lord God place his soul with the righteous repose. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, 
and the forgiveness of his sins from Christ, our mortal King and God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who have trampled upon death and abolished the power of the devil, giving life to your world, give rest to the soul of your servant Nicholas, who has fallen asleep, in a place of light, a place of repose, a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. As a good and loving God, forgive every sin. He has committed in thought, word, or deed, for there is no one who lives and does not sin. You are alone or without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Nicholas, who has fallen asleep. Christ our God, and to you we offer up glory, together with your Father, who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Everlasting be your memory, our brother, worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Together, please. Eonia imni mi, Eonia imni mi, Eonia tu imni mi. Memorita no, memorita. Let us pray to the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Glory to you, Christ our God, and hope glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God. Through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy glorious <clears throat> prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs, the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of St. Parthenios, Bishop of Artha, and John and Simeon the Fool for Christ, whose memories we celebrate this day, our Father among the saints, John Christus, the Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy we have celebrated and of all the saints, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect you. Good morning. Thank you for being here this morning.